It's time for Net at Night. Amber MacArthur is here. We're going to talk about a big sale to AOL of a company that's only been around for four days. We'll also show you some alternatives to Delicious and interview the creator of Pinboard, my favorite. It's all coming up next with Net at Night. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for Net at Night is provided by Winamp for Android, the ultimate media player for your desktop and Android device, featuring wireless sync. Download it free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Net at Night is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Net at Night with Amber MacArthur and Leo Laporte. Episode 182 for December 21st, 2010. Pinboard.in. Net at Night is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash night. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off the lifetime of your new account, go to Squarespace.com slash night and use the offer code N-I-G-H-T to save 10%. And by MailRoute.info, the best way to protect yourself from spam, viruses, simplify your life, and make your email usable again. Find out more at MailRoute.info. From Petaluma, California, US of A, I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Amber MacArthur from <laughs> Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Hello, Amber MacArthur. Welcome to Net at Night, everybody. Last hey. episode of the year. I know. I cannot believe that 2010 is almost over. It uh, Christmas is just a couple days away. It all went way too fast, Leo. This is not Connor's first Christmas. This is his second, right? It's his second Christmas. And uh, we took him to see Santa on Sunday for the very first did time he, ever. Did he cry? No, he loved Santa. He really? high-fived Santa. And then he uh, sat on his knee with the biggest smile in the world. He is not afraid of big people, but he's afraid of small people. Like he wouldn't like munchkins or other toddlers. Right. I don't know what it is, but if any people are bigger than him, he's fine. He's very friendly. <laughs> You've seen the creepy Santa uh, tumble log, right? No. No. <laughs> what is that? Um, let me see if I can find it. It's, um, I don't know if it's creepy Santa or uh, scary Santa. I should search tumblr.com for Santa. I could probably find, find quite a few Santa Sites. I can only imagine that it is pictures of creepy looking Santa. Well, it's pictures of Santa, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, creepy looking Santas and uh, creepy kids. Or kids that are creeped out by Santa. By Santa. Santa's really weird, you know, because it has been a long time since I have sat on or near Santa's lap, as I'm sure you can imagine. And when I was there at the mall on Sunday and I was looking at Santa and it kind of creeped me out. So I understand why kids are afraid. Yeah. You know, the... Yeah, so I'm glad that Connor enjoyed it, actually. Yeah, he seemed to like it. He thinks Santa's pretty cool. Although, at first, when he went to uh, his first Santa Claus parade, he thought Santa was Elmo because he was all dressed in red. So he was like, Elmo, Elmo. And we're like, uh, no, Connor. <laughs> it is uh, sketchysantas.tumblr.com. Oh, and um, basically collecting people, uh, kind of creepy-looking Santas and kids who are terrified. And you know what? There's no end... Of pictures like that. I was just reading in the paper that, in fact, it's been a little slow for Santa uh, uh, this year. <laughs> Santa's got his hand in some unfortunate spots in some of these. Oh, that's a creepy Santa. Ew. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sketchy Santas. <laughs> Look at the darker side of St. Nick. This is my favorite. <laughs> this I'm Santa is just not happy to be there. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't show me this last week because there would have been no Santa visit this weekend. <laughs> Santas and clowns, they, they go together somehow. But well, you know, there's some pantheon. really serious Santas out there. Uh, we saw a Santa at a restaurant not that long ago, and he was telling us starting in the summertime, he starts to grow out his beard. So he's ready for the holidays. And then he dyes his beard. And he's like, unlike those other Santas that have fake beards, I'm the real deal. I mean, he was pretty into it. So uh, uh, I don't know what to say. I think it's good when Santa has a real beard. I really I do too. I, I, I think that's important. 
he told us that he found that kids were less scared of him because it oh, looks yeah. more authentic um, versus the fake Santa. So um, he seemed very knowledgeable, even though he was in a big red furry suit. Now, a little word of warning. Uh, when uh, Connor asks, as he inevitably will, about Santa... Uh, and he says, why are there so many different Santas? I mean, who is this Santa? Is that the same as the other Santa? You say they're all Santa's helpers. Oh, that's yes. good to know. Santa's helpers. So they're not clones. No. Santa's helpers. Santa okay. does not have clones. Actually, you know, in the 21st century, maybe that's a better answer for modern kids. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. I was like, they're clones. Oh, yeah. Santa has, we, his DNA has been long known, and uh, they've cloned him. Now, the other thing that comes up is, you know, mommy, is Santa real? And whenever I get that question, I immediately go to NORAD's Santa Tracker. Yes, the Santa Tracker that you can track him around. I believe using, is it Google Earth that they use? They, well, last year they used Google Earth, and uh, I, I presume they're going to do it again. Uh, it's the North American Air Defense Command and the Dew Line, which is up there in northern Canada. They are able to watch with radar all of the air traffic, of course, to protect the United States and Canada from uh, bad guys. But as it happens, if you've got radar up there, you're going to see some interesting things, including maybe some reindeer, some sleighs. And you can follow Santa around the world as he goes to all the little boys and girls. And yes, they use Google Maps <laughs> to, uh, and Google Earth. To Love show it. where Santa is. Isn't that great? It's great. You know, someone told me a little story about this. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, my friend told me that uh, the reason that they created this was because they were getting so many phone calls from families and kids and uh, who would get their parents to call up and ask them, where's Santa now? Where's Santa now? Right. So it prompted them to uh, actually go out and create a tool like this that families could use. So well, I worked for years I like in, uh, in radio and, uh, and we always had the NORAD tracker, even, you know, 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, you would have somebody on the phone from NORAD who would say, "Yeah, uh, it's uh, we're here up, uh, you know, in uh, Newfoundland, and uh, we just saw Santa cross the radar. He's on his way. So everybody, go to bed now." And I always liked that. I was like, I always did that when I was a DJ, and I had to work Christmas Eve. That's too much so fun. So now the kids just go to the internet. They don't need me anymore. They don't need any of us, Leo. No, they don't. No, not at all. Actually, Leo loves, uh, at least, oh my gosh, not Leo. Connor loves Santa so much that uh, I bought this tall ceramic Santa. He's probably four feet tall. And I went out to pick him up on Saturday when I was with Connor. And he was looking at him in the store saying, Santa, Santa. So I picked him up and I put him in the front seat and like put the seatbelt on him because I was worried he was going to break. And I came home with him. And Chris thinks I'm, uh, I'm obsessed right now because there's Santas everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I love Santa. Connor loves I love him so Santa. Much. Jenna, my wife's Jennifer says... That yes, some people choose not to believe in Santa, but they don't get any toys from Santa. So mm -hmm. you get to choose what you believe. But I, I believed in Santa I believe, until I was twelve. I believe, I and do. I get toys. Yeah. I still get toys. I have a. I put in my stocking. Somebody eats that carrot and piece of cake every single Christmas Eve. Always gone, Leo. It's always, always gone. gone. And I've always had a house with a fireplace. But Santa doesn't have to have a fireplace. He can come come in any house, which is also he can come a in creepy. any door, or window. That's yeah, a little creepy too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on because coming up, we're going to talk to the one of the founders of Pinboard. Now, one of the big stories this week is that uh, Yahoo kind of inadvertently at an all hands meeting when they were announcing that they were firing four percent of their staff, also announced that some of their properties were going to disappear, including Delicious. Yeah, so this was a pretty big headline, but it's, it appears as though Yahoo kind of backpedaled a little bit, um, and I guess there was a, a lot of anger from people who were using Delicious, and well, now including they're saying me. That yeah, instead of um, getting rid of it, and I think the millions of users that are currently relying on the tool, they are just trying to sell it off to someone, a better fit. Um, so uh, in the meantime, obviously, Pinboard uh, has, I think, acquired quite a few users. And I had a chance to kind of play around with it a little bit today to see what it was all about. And we're excited to have one of the founders, I cannot pronounce his name, on the show. Yes, we'll, we'll learn how to pronounce his name. We've been using delicious... Uh for all of the Twitch shows for quite some time. In fact, one of the nice features of Delicious is people can send us bookmarks. There's an inbox. If you bookmark something on Delicious and use the uh, tag four colon twit, actually you can use four colon in anybody's username, but ours is twit, uh, it will go into our inbox. So it's, a, it, it's been a very useful way for people to suggest stories. It's how we share stories we're going to do uh, with uh, our hosts. So... You know, I'm I'm very concerned about the loss of it. I've been using Pinboard 
I looked at two different replacements. There's another one called Digo, D I I G O. G O, yep. And I looked at Digo, and Digo looks pretty cool, but it's also got a lot of stuff uh, in it. And um, and I and, and what I liked about Pinboard is it's basically uh, the, it's as clean and simple, maybe even a little simpler than Delicious with all the functionality of Delicious because it uses the Delicious API plus some additional nice features. So I was I, I kind of fell for Pinboard uh, as soon as I started using it. Now I have a Pinboard bookmarking tool on my browsers, and I've been bookmarking stuff in Pinboard for some time and, and have been very happy with it. I like how yeah. lightweight it is, you know. And it, I think they have a lot of fans. I was looking on their oh, yeah. website. I know they mentioned you, uh, Mike Arrington from TechCrunch, and uh, it seems as though they have a lot of uh, new users kind of coming on board and maybe importing their delicious links into there as well. Well, one of the reasons I used it is because uh, it would automatically uh, import and export to delicious uh, anyway, it also, um, and Digo does this too, you can save pages that you bookmark for offline viewing. So you oh, get the, your top 25 uh, pages, you can just press a button and all of a sudden they're all turned into uh, downloadable uh, offline sites. I mean, there's just a lot of nice features uh, to it. And it's, and it's very much like Delicious. You know, they, did, did they ever put ads on Delicious? I don't think they did. I don't think so. so they never monetized it. No, I don't think so. No wonder they're yeah. killing it. Yeah. I mean, it's got to cost them. I mean, it not, can't cost them that much, not like Flickr, but if, if they haven't monetized it. I know. I don't know what they were. I mean, it was just, a, I think, kind of a strange fit. And they didn't do anything with it. But um, hopefully it gets bought by someone who takes advantage of it because I'd hate to see it disappear altogether. Right, right. Well, Yahoo didn't do anything with it, so it's good somebody, Nothing. somebody acquires it. Yeah, agreed. We will talk uh, to uh, our guest in uh, just a little bit. I think his name is pronounced Mache. Maciej Saglowski, who is uh, one of the two creators of uh, Pinboard.in, and we'll ask him how it's been since that announcement. I think that was a real windfall for them. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it was. Uh, okay, so Leo, I have to ask you if you've heard of this site called Like a Little. No. You haven't? Okay. Never heard of it. Love this. Um, all right. So uh, it is a site that's absolutely exploding. It's been around for about six weeks and uh, they're getting about 1 million page views a day from colleges and universities in North America. Oh, this is the flirting site. Yeah, the flirting facilitator oh, platform, as some yeah. people call it. Uh, and it's funny, a, c a couple of weeks ago, someone who's at a university here in Canada emailed me and asked me if I had, had heard of it, and I started looking at it. And it's essentially a way for people to, or students to go in and flirt and leave messages if but, they saw someone in the library who was really cute. It's only for uh, college kids. Yeah, for now, they're focusing just on the college and university market. So, but they have a lot of colleges. This is how Facebook started. Let's not say there's anything wrong with that. No, oh. no, exactly. I mean, a lot of people are, you know, I did an interview yesterday, of course, the media is just uh, latching onto it saying, is this a Facebook killer? Because, um, you know, it's the same sort of idea that started on campus. Uh, however, it's, it's very different. Um, and also from the TechCrunch article that I read, the people behind it are a little more experienced than the uh, group over uh, who created uh, Facebook at Harvard. Uh, instead, with Like a Little, it's launched by former Google employees and a couple of Microsoft employees as well. Wow. I know. You know what they've done is they've basically extracted the big selling point of Facebook, which was meeting people, <laughs> meeting yeah. dating material. I'm putting it kindly, uh, and just said that's all we're going to do. That's all they're going to do. Yeah, interesting. Twenty yeah, million so page views. That's yeah. amazing. It is amazing. So it's growing really fast on campus. And it's funny, you know, you read through the different uh, uh, flirty little uh, messages that people are leaving. I mean, it gets pretty raunchy. I was surprised. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. Well, it's obviously, it's, um, yeah, it's like the, you know, they, they used to have in the personals, I think they still do, missed connections. Yes. To the girl the in the bookstore wearing the brown suit and the, and the carnation on a lapel. I love you. I love you. But, yeah, I mean, how exactly can you know if you idea. like somebody if you don't even, you never even talk to them? Come on. Yeah, I know. I think it's just, it's kind of a distraction right now. You know, if you're eating in your cafeteria at school and you want to check to see if anyone was checking you out or talking to you, you know, people just become a little obsessed with it. Uh, so who knows how far it's going to go. Uh, however, with the traffic it's gotten in the past few weeks, and I'm starting to see more mentions of it uh, in mainstream media, it should be interesting what happens next year. I would love to get one of the founders on uh, Net at Night. I'll try. However, I did read that um, as part of their marketing efforts, they're only really granting uh, interviews to campus newspapers. Oh, that's uh, smart. Because they don't yeah, want to create smart. a whole demand outside of the 
college ecosystem. No, they want to stay really focused right yeah, now. I think so that's smart. Uh, yeah. they're just doing a few uh, specific interviews with these different schools. So uh, watch out, Leo. Could be a big one for 2011. Hey, uh, before, before we get to, uh, we have more links in our, our, our guest. We're going to talk about Pinboard and uh, alternatives to Delicious in just a little bit. But before we do, I want to talk a little bit about Squarespace.com. Now, I have to admit, I fell in love with, with Squarespace at first sight. Before I even talked to it, I said, this is gorgeous. It's beautiful. I want to know more about your Squarespace. I mean, this is, this, this is it. I mean, it's software and hosting. It's the secret behind exceptional websites. You can click that green button at squarespace.com slash night and, and within seconds have your website. <clears throat> you don't even need a credit card. Just squarespace.com slash night. And boy, you start with these great templates. They have beautiful designer templates. Uh, but but they don't look templated. And, and the key here is, even though you have 60 plus designs to choose from, that's just the starting point. You can use drag and drop Ajax to completely customize the site to look exactly like you want. They've got a forms builder. They've got... Uh, uh, slideshows, uh, you know, uh, galleries. And if you know CSS, well, the sky's the limit. It'll take that and JavaScript too. So really, there's no limit to what you can do with a Squarespace site. Use your iPhone to update it, to check comments, to kill spam, and to get stats. That, that iPhone app is spectacular. You can also uh, get stats on the Squarespace page, and these are great stats, the kind of thing that you've always wanted to know about, the metrics about your, uh, your visitors. There's a whole lot of great information there. Uh, just go to squarespace.com slash night right now and find out what Squarespace, Squarespace can bring you. A great, easy way to make a site that looks like a pro designed it in seconds. And by the way, very affordable. It is hosting plus the software. And I can make it even more affordable. When you sign up after your two-week trial and you decide to buy, use the offer code night and you'll save 10% off the site for life. For as long as the site lasts. Squarespace. Da dot com slash night. We thank them so much for their support of uh, the Net at Night program. Yeah, they're awesome. I think I mentioned before, there's a makeup artist who I work with all the time. Uh, she goes by Tracy P Makeup, and I showed her Squarespace a few months ago, and she didn't know how to do anything online. She didn't know how to blog. She didn't know how to, um, she didn't even know, you know, how to put a picture onto a website, nothing at all. And she started right. using this. I showed her, probably I spent about a half an hour with her just showing her how it worked, um, and she immediately got in there. She blogs almost every day now. Oh, she uses the great. iPhone app. So uh, it's so simple, and she is not computer savvy at all, and she just loves it. So that's a good uh, testimonial for them. <laughs> yeah, well, they've done an amazing job of making it something that is both appeals to people who really do know technology and people who know nothing about technology. Yeah, so because you cool. can do as much or as little yeah. um, work in there as you want to, right? Exactly. As far as designing it and customizing it and really making it your own. That's pretty spectacular. It sure is. Let's get a couple more links before we get uh, our guest, Mache on from Pinboard.im. One million users for Instagram. Yeah, so Instagram just reached one million users. I'm a big fan of the service. Wow. Uh, I found out about it because of you, and I know you are a fan. Um, so they've now surpassed a pretty big milestone. Uh, they are still iPhone only, as far as I know. Which yeah. Is, I'd like to see them expand a little bit. Android, um, and, please. I like yeah. Android. Android would be the next logical mm -hmm, step. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I'm still a little frustrated because I, you, there's no real web interface uh, for your pictures unless they change that. But I don't. No. Last time I looked, no, you can uh, get the one picture, but you can't. Uh, but you can't. But see, it's really focused on the iPhone, and I'm using it on the iPad, which it works fine. Of course, you don't have a camera on the iPad. The thing that makes uh, Instagram so cool, I think, uh, over and above uh, everything else out there, is is these filters, and they've added some interesting uh, new yeah. filters now. Um, so I'm going to choose this picture and, and they've added one for our friend, Kevin Rose. Yeah, I guess he and his girlfriend just got a uh, new dog not that long and ago. And they've got now a toaster filter, which is the name yeah, of the dog. so cute. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Uh, there's a, there's a black and white, there's a, you know, 70s, you know, Polaroid looking instant camera stuff. Uh, this is another new one. It's called Sutro. Sutro, yep. Yeah, I like that too. So once you've, once you've got your picture filtered and everything, you can post it on Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, Posterous, Tumblr. Foursquare now supports pictures, by the way. So if you add an, an, know, a location, yeah. you, can, you can post it uh, on Foursquare. And Foursquare, if you go to foursquare.com, will have the picture in there. I think the Foursquare app now supports pictures as well. Yep. 
I, I think it does as well. Yeah, I love one Instagram million love, users. I know, and I love all wow. their filters. However, I will say you get kind of sick of them, so I, I'm happy to see them introduce a couple yeah. of new filters. Yeah. I think that's a really good idea if they roll them out on a regular basis because you know you get bored. You know, there's a couple that I really like and I've used regularly, and then I just get sick of using them. So I'm going to go and start trying out Sutro and uh, Toaster. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So congratulations, Instagram. We had them on Kevin and the uh, company on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, great job. It's amazing. Um, also, uh, congratulations to the folks over at About.me. Now, we've done uh, Flavors.me. They're the same yeah. kind of thing, though, right? Yeah, it's very similar. You know, uh, the idea being that you essentially create sort of a one web page that has an image as the background, and then you pull in your feeds for different social sites like Twitter um, and Facebook and LinkedIn. I think there you can pull in more than a dozen, at least on flavors.me. And so you really have a central place that you can set up within, you know, a couple of minutes. That's kind of your online destination for people to find out more about what you do. Um, and AOL just uh, bought about.me. I haven't been able to find out how much they paid for it. I don't know if you have any more into no, that. but it sounded like it was a significant amount of money. You know, I met the the, the founder Tony is a mul is a serial entrepreneur. There's my uh, about dot me slash Leo Laporte uh, page. Um, what these are, what it's really about is big pictures, isn't it? Giant pictures. It really is. <laughs> you know, that's the that's the key to the whole thing. Um, and uh, Tony's a really nice guy. He was at LeWeb. Uh, he's founded a number of companies. I mean, this is not the not the first company he's got but this has only been open public for what four days and the rumor is 11 to 19 million dollars really yeah for a site that can't have acquired too many people uh i mean i guess they got a lot of he was smart he's got a lot of the uh yeah. you know the movers and shakers in the world and of course he's got some very big well-known um advisors like kevin rose here's maggie mason we've interviewed her before so it's a big picture, and then you get a little text. It's kind of the idea is it's like your business card on the uh, on the internet. Yeah, well, and I can't I mean, imagine ten million dollars. I know that. that's the thing. I love what they There's do, Tony's, but uh, it's so simple. I mean, you're really just uploading, like you said, a big image that you already own, right. and then you're pulling in feeds from different social sites that you already update. So um, as far as the technology, it's not that advanced. And I was trying to figure out what's the difference between flavors dot me and about None. dot me. And um, well, I found out Leo actually on Read Write Web. I was reading an article, and it says on flavors dot me they have a much better um, personal analytics tool that's very addictive to find out how many people that's are. True. On your profile, I will agree with that. Your inbound links as well to your page. Um, so uh, it, it gives you this sense. It's almost like ego surfing in the old days on Google. You can go and find out, you know, how popular your page is. And I guess that whole experience is much better than Flavor. So that's a, a big differentiator. You know, it's interesting. Is Tony uh, founded Sphere, which was sold to AOL. He uh, is a special advisor to AOL Ventures. <laughs> he sold. He was on the board of Odd Post, which Yahoo bought. Um, I mean, uh, Danger, which Microsoft uh, bought. So this is a guy, if you're going to invest in somebody, <laughs> I think this is the guy. Find out what Tony Conrad's doing next, will you? And uh, yeah. and if you can put some money into it, too, because, wow, what a story. Now, you got to figure that the Flavors.me guys are looking at this and not saying, oh, why not me? But, hmm, I wonder if Google's going to hire, you know, talk to us or it's got to, yeah. it's got to raise their value, right? Yeah. I should ask them, you know, we both know Ray who is working on, um, over at that team at flavors.me. Right. Um, uh, so I, I might ask him to see sort of what the feeling is over there as far as uh, this news coming out. The neat thing about both of these services though, I will say, um, I, I showed one to someone not that long ago and within seconds, they literally, oh, you yeah. know, pulled in a picture and then had their feeds and they thought it was like magic. So, um, you know, it's not a full robust website where you can blog and do it's all these things. It's a business card. It is a business card. And so it serves that purpose. But when you see someone who's not tech savvy at all, create it in, you know, a minute or something, they, right. I think it's a kind of a magical moment. <laughs> I think it was Ryan Block who introduced it, Ryan and Veronica. Uh, and I think Ryan is an investor or no, he was an advisor, I think, to them. Oh, okay. It's such an incestuous world. It really is. <laughs> yeah, now they're all rich. Rich! <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm gonna see if I can sign into my about.me account and take a look at those stats that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Please do because yeah. I don't use about.me. I am on flavors.me, but uh, I'd love to see them because I think that's the type of thing that you could kind of get hooked on, right? Yeah. Especially for stats geeks, you know, I love looking at stats for anything. So um, whether it's my Facebook account or my website, <laughs> stats are always fun. fun. That's you know, that's that Squarespace thing too. Is you get these great, uh, great Squarespace stats. So I'm gonna see if I can sign in, redirect me back. My internet's really slow today.
You know, yeah. it's probably because the FCC voted in favor of net neutrality and Comcast is just protesting. Oh, uh, that makes sense. So here's, and by the way, this is, uh, this is um, when you go to your about.me account, it goes right to the stats. And I have one view today, five clicks, and one link. So <laughs> sometimes stats are very depressing. <laughs> oh, poor Leo. That's I'm just sure that will pathetic. increase soon enough. But Leo, you know, it's not as though you advertise that. Let's see the past year. Anymore. Oh, 134 people. Mm -hmm. Hmm. See, this is the this is the only missing part for me about both of these services. I love them. I love how easy it is to use. However, you know, like we mentioned Squarespace, I want a place where people can dive into kind of more of what I do. I can blog and I can have that whole experience. So I just don't know how these kind of fit into my life. Like I know it's an online business card, but if I'm going to send people to one place, I'm going to send them there or an actual website. And I, I tend to lean towards the website. Me too, because it's just, well, I mean, all your content is kind of linked from there. I also use a Google profile page, and frankly, that's what I, I put that on my business card. Mm -hmm. I put that on uh, on every site because that links to everything. Um, and it's Google. I don't know. This is prettier though, isn't it? It's beautiful, but I guess, you know, if you're out there as a professional, I want people to kind of go to ambermac.com, right. see what oh, I do because yeah. I can control that more. Yeah. Do I want them to necessarily see my most recent update on Twitter where I'm like, oh, mm, partying with Sarah point. at the good club. Point. You know, here's a picture. I don't know. Yeah, that's a very good point. Well, we don't know how much, but uh, it looks like the consensus is well over $10 million for about.me. Wow. All right, we're going to get to the wow. site of the night, the video of the week, and most importantly, Mache, our guest of the week and uh, find out more about this uh, delicious replacement that i've actually been very happy with and used very happily called pinboard.in before we do that though can i mention audible.com you know i'm an of audible course. fanatic yes, I, I have over 400 books in my audible library and you know i know that when i go on my on my android phone or my iphone i've got that great uh, audible application and it, it's so cool it, you know, you, you can, of course, put the, you know, the files on there. Uh, you, you can listen to them with your iPod. But when you go to your Android app on your, or rather your uh, Audible app on Android, uh, I've got the widget. I can play it. I've got all of my books on here. I can listen to anything I want to. Right now, I'm listening to uh, Keith Richards' Life. I was going to ask you if oh, you're still listening to that. it's so good. It's so good. And you know what? It's fun. When, you ha when you're listening to an audio book, I'll take a break, and, and he's talking about a, a Rolling Stones song. I'll listen to the song that he's talking about, and then I'll go back to listening to the book, which is so much fun. That's so cool. I've heard a lot of people who absolutely love that book. You know, um, He just, says he remembers everything. I don't know how, <laughs> given the amount of drugs he used, but uh, it's, it apparently has, he does. These are, this is the list of books I have on audible.com, and I can listen to any of them through this Audible app. That's one of the things I like about Audible is that once you once you buy that book, it's it's just like a regular book. It's in your library. And books, unlike, I don't know, about movies and TV shows, I probably don't want to go back and watch the same TV show a bunch of times, but frequently I want to listen to a book again. And it's really nice to have this. Audible has more than 75,000 titles. Uh, if you go to audible.com, you can, can browse around and you can get your first book free, which is kind of cool. Go to audible.com slash night. You can sign up for the gold account. That's a book a month. That's what I would do. You can buy, you can go a la carte on Audible and just, you know, buy individual books just as you would in any bookstore. But I subscribe. I actually have a two book a month uh, account uh, because I'm going to listen to that many. So it saves me money. Here's yeah, a good one. People like... love Water for Elephants. Have you listened to that yet? On no, sale right now, half price. Um, but you can I was also just at, go ahead. Sorry, just at, at Earth, the book by John Stewart. Oh, and, what a uh, great book! It's the user it, manual. It looks like uh, John Stewart, Samantha B, and all of the correspondents, they all yes. read, yes. narrate. Yes. That's neat. See, that's a way. I mean, a book like that, you you could read the book, but so much better, mm -hmm. so much better to listen to them talk the book. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's a um, um, Earth. It's a guide for people not from Earth. <laughs> I love it. For, for aliens, if you're visiting Earth, the audiobook, A Visitor's Guide to the Human Race, John Stewart, Samantha B, Wyatt Cenac, Jason Jones, Jason John Jones. Oliver, who I love. Uh, he is about the funniest man in the face. Let's listen to a little bit of Earth. And yeah. then perhaps take you to one of our cinemas. We'll have more on those later. Share a laugh together, watching Men in Black or 
cry together watching ET or feeling See, I, I think that it really there's something about Day an audio book. Aliens or species or that just clothes. brings the book to life. I'm I'm a big fan. I love books and I read paper books all the time. I read on the Kindle. But if I can get it on audio, that's how I'm gonna get it. Get your first one free and you see how you feel about it. Audible.com slash night plays back on all the popular devices. Um, as I showed you on Android and iPhone with their special application or just on any iPod. Audible.com slash night. Get your first book free. You'll get the gold account. First book's free. You can cancel any time, but the book is yours to keep forever. Audible.com slash night. We thank them so much for their support of Net at Night. You want to do, uh, what do you want to do next? You want to get our guest on or site of the week? Let's get our let's guest do, on. Yeah, let's get the yeah. guest on and then after we can do the site He's of the been night. so and patient. Yes, I will say our site of the night is going to be great for people who expect a lot of electronic gifts over the holidays and have old stuff they need to get rid of. That's all I'll tease it with. <laughs> and I will say, I will also say, as long as we're talking, that we are we are not going to have a show next week. We're going to do a best of Net at Night next week. So take the week off. And this is our last show for uh, 2011, believe it or not. Or 2010. 2010. We won't be back <laughs> till 2011. Yeah. And here, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is, now you're going to have to tell me how to say your name. <laughs> Sure, it's a Mache, like Versace. Mache. Ah. That was easy. And it's Ceglowski yeah. or Ceglowski? Ceglowski. Ceglowski. Where are you right now? Are you in the U.S.? Yes, I am. I'm in San Francisco in the Mission. Oh, you're not far away. Oh, no. Should have gone to the cottage. <laughs> you could have come up here. So it's so nice to meet you, and I, I really thank you for Pinboard. The timing couldn't be better. Uh, <laughs> for some of us, yeah. Yeah. Are we you going crazy? Weekend. Yes, yes, we've had a hell of a few days. <laughs> you know, wow. one, of the, one of the things I like best about Pinboard, if you go to pinboard.in, that's the front page, it's not free. I really like that because, you know, Delicious was free, and now it's going away. Yeah. And there's a lot to be said for, and it's not expensive, but there's a lot to be said for um, having reasonable expectations. And I love the way you charge. Tell us about the how much it changes, the price changes. Yeah, the price is pegged to the number of users. So uh, basically, the more people sign up, the more it goes up. I think it's 40 users to the penny right now. Uh, and it's not even, you know, it's not my idea. I got it from Joshua Schachter, uh, the founder of Delicious, who, you know, we were trying to come up with a scheme to have a service that would let, you know, scale kind of better than, uh, than these services where there's free accounts and everybody signs up at once and it blows up the servers. So this was, this was, so, so did, how much is Joshua involved with the uh, pinboard? Oh, we were just chatting, you know, when I was starting up the site, I was kind of trying to think of a pricing model and he, uh, he suggested that. I think he was more. a little dissatisfied with, I, I know he was cause he's a friend of Kevin Rose's and uh, he's told me, uh, Kevin's told me he was a little dissatisfied with the way uh, delicious was kind of neglected by Yahoo. Yeah, I don't want to speak for him, but no. I, I worked at Yahoo at the time, and yeah, I think uh, I, I worked with Upcoming. I, I, oh, I you must be unhappy about that. That's another one of the sites that's scheduled to be shut down. It, it seemed to be a pattern there of, you know, these startups would get swallowed up and then kind of get lost within. Uh, I, I thought of Yahoo as kind of a jello mold. You know, it had kind of this pervasive jello and little raisins and things embedded in it, and nobody really knew how to... <laughs> yeah, how to make the jello. And, and great raisins. That's the same. I mean, <laughs> Flickr, delicious, uh, 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 upcoming. I used upcoming. I love upcoming. That was a great site. And it's very sad to me because these sites are just being neglected. And then Yahoo says, well, throws up its hand and says, well, I guess uh, nobody wants it. But, well, don't neglect it. Well, I think you saw like by the uproar when, uh, when this came out. Oh, yeah. That people are actually very passionate about these products. And, you know, I mean, they all... They, all flock to a paid site uh, because they were afraid that the free owner right. shut down. So Yahoo is just mismanaging exactly. a really loyal user base. So, so you... go, go, one more question, Amber, then I'll let you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and, and I think this is kind of important because I think there are people out there who go, well, I don't understand. Why would I need Delicious or Pinboard or Digo? What is, what do these, and if you look at Pinboard, it's not immediately obvious. What is the point of these sites? Maybe you can explain this in a way that people understand. I think of Pinboard as a personal archive. You know, when Delicious started and, and other similar sites, they were kind of about sharing links with your friends and what you were reading at the moment. That's kind of been taken over now by Twitter and Facebook, but these are sites that are very ephemeral. You know, you share stuff one day. I don't think you can even go back in Twitter history all that far before you just run no, out. No, 3,500 tweets or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you're actually trying to remember something from more than a couple of weeks ago, uh, then you're kind of stuck and people come up with very 
baroque strategies for keeping track of things. I created the site basically because I wanted a, a, a simpler kind of delicious the way it used to be that also kept copies of everything for me. You did such a great job. I stuff. fell in love with it immediately. Oh, thanks. Um, and you use the delicious API, so it's fairly easy to write plugins, which is key. Yeah, we tried to make it as simple as possible for people to just switch over. I just like the attitude, too, because right here on the front page, should you switch from delicious? Well, we have arguments for and against. I know. I thought <laughs> that was really cool that, that you guys that did that. <laughs> yeah, maybe one more argument against, I mean, for. Uh, mm, Go ahead, Amber. I'm sorry I'm monopolizing, but I'm just such oh, no, a no, fan no. of Pinboard, you know? No, no, that's fine. I was just curious um, why you call it social bookmarking for introverts um, or antisocial bookmarking. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, I mean, bookmarking usually is kind of social, so I'm sure there's a story behind this. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I think there's kind of two sides to, like, if you're really, really antisocial, you can just store everything locally. You know, nobody has to ever see your bookmarks. Well, I think that's what the confusion is, because <laughs> Firefox has bookmarks, Chrome has bookmarks. What do I need an external bookmark site for? Well, one thing is, you know, uh, I, I tried a version of Pinboard a couple of years ago that was local, and my fan just ran all the time as it attempted to store everything, <laughs> index everything at once. And I remember, you know, that, that Spotlight would run at the same time. So I, I kind of liked having a server where things would just get taken care of for me. Similar, you know, if I want stuff pulled in from Twitter, I want stuff pulled in from these other places. That's I, a I nice feature, by the way. If you put a bookmark on Twitter, it will you can set it so it will pull it in and add that to your bookmarks. Yeah, thanks for mentioning it because I'm too tired to remember. But, yeah, we, do, <laughs> I love that. we try very hard. We try very hard to like find where people are throwing links and, and make it possible for them to you know suck them in and just keep them around. And we archive your tweets as well, so you actually go back more than 3,500 uh, on the, on Pinboard and it's sort of a fast one. So th there's a lot to be said to having a big fat server up there. It just kind of runs in and not to think about it. That does your bookmark collecting for you. And I think also when you have a lot of people bookmarking, they add a lot of information with tags. And descriptions. Uh, I think that is is very interesting, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I also want to have live chat and you know five toolbars and post to six services and, and kind of that aggressively social element you see on free sites where they're trying to basically show you ads, make money off you. That kind of thing. What's the process like for people who are delicious fans and have used the service for a while and want to start using Pinboard? Is it, I mean, aside from having to pay for it, is it fairly seamless to, um, you know, start to learn how to use this? Well, we've tried to make it seamless. I'm working on an FAQ for the things that have turned to, turned out to be a little difficult for uh, for delicious users. You can export everything from Dell and suck it right back in. You'll have your privacy settings, your tags, pretty much everything except tag bundles, which we have. Uh, you know, we have that information stored, but we don't use it yet for anything. So, so I would go to Delicious and, and, and use the export command to export all my bookmarks out. Yeah, would you go to the settings page, there's an export command, okay. uh, and it'll give you a file. You can upload that directly to Pinboard, and your bookmarks will appear without, within about 20 seconds at this point. Mm -hmm. I love the name, too. You know, I, I remember when Delicious first came out and trying to spell that uh, <laughs> URL when they had all the dots in it. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that was a barrier to entry for a lot of people who liked the idea of bookmarking but didn't want to have to spell out DEL.ICO. I know. Um, that was you know, the but, one thing Yahoo did. That was smart. <laughs> it was a change yeah. to delicious.com. I now, remember the triumphal day when they bought that domain. <laughs> that was huge. Now, pinboard is not .com. It's .in. Yes. Yes. Why? Uh, .com. I, I don't know what pinboard.com is. I, I checked a long time ago, but I forgot. It's so, what you could get, in other words. It's what we could get. And, you know, uh, it's not Libya, at least. <laughs> not that L-Y. <laughs> so, so, so what, go ahead. Leo? Nope. No, you go ahead. Well, I see that it is eight dollars and eighty-seven cents, and I can extrapolate uh, from that that you have about eighty-eight. Is that about eighty-eight thousand users based on your point zero 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 one cent per user? I think you're off by a factor of ten. We have about eight hundred eighty thousand. No, 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 no. Other, other direction. Eight thousand. <laughs> yeah, we have around ten, ten or twelve. Is I that all really? Oh. So, yeah. Are the yeah, servers yeah. running out of your house? <laughs> it's running off my laptop. This way, you can hear the fan. No, it up. isn't. No, tell me it's not. Uh, we have we have we have a sane uh, sane setup. We have big fat servers that I love, um, and but it all runs off of one machine except for background tasks. So part of the reason I think a paid site is attractive is because it's smaller. You know, mm -hmm, we, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we got an avalanche of signups, but if we had been a free site, we would have been down immediately. And, uh, and, and, and people are paying their way. They're paying for what they're using, which I like. Yeah, people have now paid for resources that we can throw at, you know, right. at, we can get an ops person, which I've dreamed of forever, and things like that. So it really is, you know, it's designed that way for a reason. Do you want to stay small? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy it. I can do personal su customer support. You know, Peter and I have been tweeting and emailing people. Uh, it's much more fun when you actually get to talk to them. When I was at Yahoo, we had to go through all these layers of PR and, uh, you know, legal to be even able to tell people directly that a, you know, a bug was going to be fixed or admit that it was a bug. I didn't want to repeat that. Why does it get more expensive as more people use it? Because I guess I'm stuck in the Groupon world where you get all these great discounts that, you know, depending on a minimum number of people who buy something. So am I missing something there or is it just part of the overall strategy? No, it, it gets more expensive because the marginal cost of a new user actually gets higher as a, at a certain point you have to split it into multiple machines and then you have to manage those. And then there's all these kind of scaling. Um, oh, okay. you know, once you get into the millions of users, it gets much cheaper with every additional one. But that that first few steps where you're going from a tiny site to a medium one to a, to a medium large one are actually painful and expensive. You have to add machines all the time. So to get an account, it's right now, it's as we speak, $8.87. But as everybody signs up, it's going to go up. So sign up get now. Get it on the ground floor. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one more fee you can pay, which I paid immediately. Which is twenty. That by the way, that eight eighty seven is for life, right? That's that's once. Yeah, yeah, that's a one time fee. But then, if you want for twenty five dollars a year, you can get offline storage of your pages. Tell tell us how that works. Yeah, for twenty five bucks a year, we basically cache all your bookmarks. So we go and download everything retroactively in your account. We save all the images, the embedded content, all the JavaScript and stuff. Everything we can pull down. Put it on the server and it's visible to you there's a link next to every bookmark so if those sites go offline you know you, you still have the thing that you, you looked at before we also index it so you have full text search uh, which is what i'm actually going to work on getting back up as soon as we got this <laughs> <laughs> that's really oh, no. a, a great a great feature and, and you yeah, can I see I've... my old delicious bookmarks from you know 2005 2004 and just the number of things that were offline already is yeah is terror. yeah so there's cached versions of the site uh, just just as Google does a cache, only you, you have a little bit more complete. You can also do off offline reading, right? You'll take the top, what, 25 pages? Yeah, that's right. You can click on any page and you'll get a, you know, in a few minutes you'll get a little uh, downloadable link that you can open. And it gives you basically the cached copies of those pages. So if you're on the go somewhere where you have no internet, you can, uh, you can read stuff. We're, you know, we're still working to make that more useful, but that's, uh, that's there right now on the site. And we're also going to make it possible for people who have the archival account to just download their entire uh, collection of stuff. You know, we, oh, I like that. Yeah, one person who has uh, 70,000 bookmarks and uh, 31 gigabytes of stuff on wow. the servers. Wow. We have some hoarders. That's a lot. <laughs> There, there, there's a bookmarklet, of course, a number of different bookmarklets, as a matter of fact. And there are also some extensions. I, I use a Chrome extension. Um, is yeah, there people one have been making, so these are third-party extensions. People right. have been making wonderful ones. And I'm really grateful for the work they've done. Partly because uh, you support the Delicious API. They can just take existing code and, uh, and port it over. Yeah, yeah. And there's complete RSS, which I really think is slick. Of That's awesome. If you remember the original Delicious, that was one of the you know, greatest, uh, greatest things about it. Joshua had the smarts to put RSS feeds on every single page, and that really distinguished it from every other site out there. Yeah. Let me ask some um, tech questions. What, what is this running on? Uh, it's running on a big digital one server, Ubuntu, uh, MySQL, PHP, uh, Perl scripts in the background, uh, massive, you know, cron jobs, screen sessions. Interesting. So it's PHP and Perl. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And MySQL. Are you using a framework of any kind? I mean, when you build a site like this, eventually you end up kind of building your own framework yes, in the right. process of it. So. <laughs> but I, I intentionally did it that way because that way, you know, the, the that model and abstractions are, are customized for what you're doing rather than trying to shoot on things. And again, if we'd been a Django or a Rails site, we would be down right now. Ah, that's a good point. You scaled. Um, interesting that it's so clean. Uh, this was a, you know, there are other choices. We've talked about Digo, D I I G O, which uh, is also a place that refugees are running to uh, from yes. Delicious. Um, and and there's just a very clear difference. Some people will prefer Digo because it's got more of a UI and it's you know more like a website. Uh, I li actually I just love the simplicity and the functionality of this. Um, we use it for social bookmarking for all of our shows. Uh, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really thrilled. Well, and we kind of have been doing both because you, it was nice. You are automatically uh, sync with Delicious. So mm -hmm. I could bookmark it on Delicious and would come over to Pinboard. Yeah. Um, but I think from now on, we're just going to leave it at Pinboard and oh, leave well, it at that. I, I, I appreciate the vote of confidence. Hey, I paid my eight bucks. Yeah, that's right. I know. Yeah. I have to sign up before it gets too expensive. <laughs>
<laughs> it was only four or five dollars when I signed up. <laughs> yeah, well, the funny thing is, people, uh, you know, I understand that paying online is still a novelty, but people have been kind of treating this like they would a house purchase. You know, there's a lot of agonizing and uh, uh, and thinking it over, and and, and I, I'm intrigued by this. You know, you, even uh, though it's only eight just, bucks, yeah. 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 I mean, I I, I understand and I'm it, but. I think you use services more that you pay for, though. I, I find, at least my experience has been, if, if something's free, I tend to not, you know, bother using it after the first few weeks. But if I pay for something, I mean, I felt the same way with Flickr. When I started paying for it, um, you know, there was more of an attachment. So uh, I think it's a, a good thing in some ways. Yeah. So they've, you've already archived all uh, 1,271 of my bookmarks, consuming 668 megabytes of disk space. So I'm using those. Re I'm, yes. I'm using what I paid for here. Okay. Uh, that's, that's You're not even on my radar, Leo. That's, you know. that's nothing, huh? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm using half a gig, and it's nothing. Uh, it shows you what the bookmarks. You, I just love this kind of stuff. It's a, it's really bookmarking for geeks, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the key. Geeks and hoarders and people, you know, and, and, and fanfic and people are coming over now. Those are the heaviest users of Delicious. Is who? Recent years, fanfic authors. Really? Yeah. Huh. Oh, they had the most crazy use of tagging, and they're starting to appear, which I take it as a sign that we've arrived. Huh. Fanfic. I wonder why they do so much bookmarking. They uh, because they love the tags. They have intricate tagging systems. Oh, and it's all about taxonomies. Ah. Yes, yes. They have the craziest taxonomies. It's a fascinating world. Now you do have like delicious. You have recent bookmarks, but you also have popular. Uh, uh, that's going to be a little out of date. Uh, <laughs> not, I guess it dates back not, to Thursday. Not scraping that recently, huh? Yeah, I haven't uh, haven't had the time to regenerate that. Yeah, and, and, and you can really tell that it's a little bit of a smaller service than Delicious because it's very, I mean, like, very iconoclastic. Like, the number two popular bookmark is a, is a Vim cheat sheet for people who use VI. I mean, yes. that's, you know. It's a nerd patrol. It's nerd patrol. <laughs> it's almost like Hacker News, really. It's quite good. <laughs> I like It'll it. It'll be interesting to see what the popular page looks like when we regenerate it uh, tonight. You know, yeah, I'm sure it's gonna it might change. change. Yeah. See if it changes as more people sign on. I like it. Thank you so much for making this. How, how long has it been around? Uh, since June of 2009. Jeez, I'm just slow. I just signed up wow. in September. I don't know. You know, we built it slowly. I'm, I'm glad you found it. <laughs> I love it, Mache. Thank you so much for That's joining great. us. That's great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so Ma much, guys. Mache Siglovsky, and uh, it is pinboard.in, and if you go there right now, it might be less than nine dollars. Act now. Act now. I think that, that is that to me is the single brilliant stroke. When I saw that, I went, I know I, I this is the kind of site I want to invest in because these people have a have a great innovative way of thinking that in the long run is going to benefit us in all sorts of interesting ways. Isn't that funny? That's how we how I I look at sites and I evaluate them. Uh, and I also love that you generate at the top how many seconds it took to generate the page. I just think I just love that's that funny. stuff. funny. We're proud of it. I think we're the fastest site by far. Really fast. Well, well, that's no. only temporary. Sure <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Everybody sign up right now. Thank you yeah. very much for joining us, Mache. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. Isn't that fun? It's super fun. I, yeah. Even when I went there, Leo, I knew we were having them on the show, and I read, like you mentioned, uh, where they compared, uh, you know, they said why you would want to stay with Pinboard versus why you may want to stay with Delicious. I just thought, wow, this is yeah. a, a, a creative way to, uh, you know, entice people or tell them that they shouldn't maybe try it out. <laughs> right. It's completely fair, you know? Um, yeah, it's very real. And they are missing, I should have asked Mache, because they're, they're missing a few little features that I like, like the uh, four, as I mentioned, that four colon thing and they even say that well if you like that you, you know maybe you want to stick with uh, you might want to stick with them um, yeah delicious but now there's well, a lot of reasons to find something to, yeah alternate. hopefully eventually they will start to you know cross off that list of why you'd want to go with delicious because they'll be adding more stuff right. <laughs> um and features that people love because it seems like it obviously is still very much a work in progress all right we're going to wrap this up we've got our site of the night and our video of the week but before we get to those i want to mention our friends at mailroute.info very quickly, this is a great site if you are running your own server and you want the best spam fighting. You don't need to get a big box. You don't need to pay a lot of money. You can get very affordable spam writing from fighting from MailRoute.info. How do I know? I've been using it since 2004. It's been my secret weapon against spam. LeoVille.com, my uh, domain. Yeah, I've been using that for email for 15 years, something like that. That means I am on every email spam list there is. I mean, really. <laughs> 
There's just not one that doesn't have that address or all of the addresses on it. Mail route is so brilliant. I, I wish, you know, sometime we're going to get Tom in here and talk to him about what he does to fight spam because there's all sorts of interesting techniques. This guy's been involved in email since the earliest days. He's a friend of John Postel at uh, USC. He's, he knows mail, route, mail. He wrote FrontBridge for Microsoft. Actually, they ended up buying it. It's the Microsoft Hosted Exchange Services. That's what they call it. Um, so he does things like gray listing, which is a very clever technique, um, you, which you can turn on or off. But if you turn it on... The first time you get mail from somebody you've never gotten mail from before, it says, oh, busy, can you come back in a minute? And spammers never come back. But real mailing uh, uh, emailers, as real servers, will always come back 15 seconds or a minute later and try again. So it, it gets just like that, it gets rid of spam. Uh, you could do things like say, hey, if it's not one of these addresses, because I get a lot, I get, there, I get email, a considerable number of uh, messages to Leo's hair at leoville.com. I kid you not. Hi. So it just dumps it. Uh, you know, it says, well, what, what, what addresses are real? And it dumps every, it does this so well. They, Tom says he gets one in 250,000 false positives. I, I've never seen a false positive. That is an email that was good, but that was blocked by MailRoute, not seen one. But let me tell you, 97% of my email to leoville.com is spam. Of the last 12 months, almost a million messages, 970,000 of which I never saw because they were spam and they just never went through. Those 30,000 messages, those were good messages. That's that's the right kind of filtering. Find out more at mailroute.info. Uh, very affordable, really good, 99.9999, I think five nines up time, uh, which means if your server goes down, you don't have to ever worry about losing mail because MailRoute will spool it out. They have a mail bagging service. It's a great deal. 10% off for life when you use that special URL, mailroute.info. Okay, Amber MacArthur, let's get our site of the night here. Okay, so uh, Christmas is coming up and in just a few days, and I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to get things that uh, they love. However, it means that their old electronics, their old gear, that kind of stuff, they may want to sell off and get a little bit of money for it. Um, there's a really cool site out there that just launched a few months ago called Worth Monkey that my <laughs> friend uh, Ravi told me about. Uh, it's fantastic. It will tell you how much an item is worth um, wow. if you're thinking of possibly selling it or if you're even buying used items online. You want to know how much you should be paying. It gives you kind of a range. Um, so if you go to worthmonkey.com and you you know put in the type of digital camera you're using and uh, the model and all of that, you'll get lots of really valuable info, info that will help you uh, determine what you want to pay or what you want to receive for selling the item. This would be good Very to use handy. with like gazelle.com where they actually, they, they, these guys don't do the selling. They just give you price information, right? They just give you price information. It's yeah. like the blue book. You know, people use that right. for cars all the time. So uh, same concept. It just gives you uh, prices and, and uh, cool. like I said, what you should expect. So use, use it in conjunction with gazelle. Yeah. Gazelle actually one. does the selling. Yeah, that's cool. That's handy then. That's cool. Yeah, yeah it's fun. So uh, worthmonkey.com and Leo for our video of the week. Now, when we're coming up for, with videos every single week. I hate to show um, videos that don't have any audio that our listeners can kind of follow along. However, this is such an amazing video that I encourage everybody who is listening to the show to go and find it on YouTube or check the links even better on twit.tv under net at night. Uh, the digital story of nativity. Um, now, if you haven't seen this, what they've done is they've essentially created the story of nativity using uh, social media tools like Facebook and Twitter and uh, talked about what would happen right now now, um, if uh, that time were uh, um, occurring in 2010. And it's just a really neat look um, at social media and uh, I guess how far we've come. Wow, what a neat idea. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I see a whole bunch of versions of this. Oh, I should have sent you. You, you should did, have but I don't have the link on the same computer. Okay, so... Um, Let me, I think I've got, I've got probably the canonical one. So if you search for Digital Story of Nativity on YouTube... You'll find quite a few. Yeah, I guess they're the translated one, into different languages and so forth. Yeah, the one I'm looking at is by Eccentric PT, and it appears that they have about 3 million views. Um, and so that, that uh, is that kind of... That sounds like that would be the right one. The right one. It so. says, uh, okay, I see. What, I, I thought it might be in Portuguese, but that's just a link on the top there to the version in Portuguese. Well, let's watch this. And should I narrate? Yeah, that would be great. I could just I could just read along. It's worth it, you know. Yeah. Like I said, I don't like to do this all the time, but it really is worth it. And this is a takeoff of that Google ad that they had on the yes. Super Bowl, where they did a search, they do a search, and then another search, and it leads to a search after search. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the digital story of nativity. Oh, before we do this, Amber, thank you. 
Find yeah, it. Thank Amber's you. book, I got it right here, is Power Friending. Hey, who took Amber's book? There it is. Power. It's, by the way, I can't keep this in the studio. People keep stealing it to read it. Power Friending, uh, it's a great book if you want to know how to use social media to grow your business. Uh, available right now online from Portfolio. You'll find it at Amazon.com and everywhere else. AmberMac.com is your blog. Uh, don't forget CommandN.TV, the best-looking video podcasts on the internets. Anything it's else I can one. plug for you? Um, actually, uh, if you are listening to this show before Wednesday evening, for the first time ever, we're going to be streaming my TV show, Web Nation, oh, cool. uh, on CP24. So we're doing a holiday version uh, Wednesday evening for an hour. So uh, you'll be able to get see, I think, behind the scenes stuff as well during commercial breaks. Um, so we're going to stream that whole show live. So I hope, hopefully, a lot of people will show up. And Leo, I'll send you the link so you can take a peek at what you've taught me over the years about hosting, especially <laughs> live shows. Nothing. Taught you nothing. Oh, come on. You yes, are a yes. natural. <laughs> Although I do remember that first audition video. Someday I have to show that to everybody. No, that's okay, because I also have a video of you, and if I, you showed that one, I would have to bring out the dancing video at oh. the drunk party. Mutually yeah. assured destruction, eh, MacArthur? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Amber. I'll see you next week. Uh, actually, no, no no show next week. Best of next week. The best moments from uh, the year gone by. And by the way, Amber also features prominently in our Twit Best of. You remember that moment. I sure do. <laughs> All it's next week. I'll see you in 2011. Time. Have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year, Amber. You too. Take care. And now, without further ado, uh, this holiday time, the digital story of nativity. I'll just, I'll just narrow it along here. Google search the story of the nativity. Nazareth, Israel. Click that link and zoom in iPhone picture, Archangel, a text from Archangel Gabriel. Mary, you're going to have a baby. Wikipedia search for Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit depicted as a dove. Logging into holy underscore Mary on Google. And here's her Gmail, a message. Oh, she's writing a message to joseph.carpenter07 at gmail.com. Subject annunciation. Joseph, uh, we need to talk. I'm going to be pregnant, XOXO, reply ASAP, bolding need to talk. Your message has been sent. Google Maps, Nazareth, Israel, directions to Bethlehem. It's a long, avoid Romans along the way, good idea. Renting city, airport code, Nazareth, she's going to rent, let's see, a donkey, it's available. And Joseph Carpenter on Twitter, traveling to Bethlehem with Mary for the census. And into Foursquare, no vacancy everywhere. Wait a minute, here's a stable. There's a little vacancy available. He puts it in his Facebook news, news feed. I'm so nervous. Will the baby be born right here? Question mark. Joseph just bought a cow and a donkey. He's playing Farmville. <laughs> Uppercase, the baby was born. Upload a photo, choose file, birth baby Jesus JPEG. And there you have it right there on his Facebook page. Lots of likes. Lots of likes. And now he's going to create an event. Meet the baby. Where? Stable. Bethlehem. Attending, Joseph, Melchior, Gaspar, Balthazar, the three wise men. King Balthazar tweets, follow me to hashtag worship the baby. <laughs> now back to uh, our Google Mail. Melchior underscore king to Balthazar underscore magi at gmail. Subject baby offerings. Have you already thought of a gift to the baby? Your message has been sent. Response to King Balthazar from a uh, King Melchior from King Balthazar. Camel, desert crossing, frankincense, myrrh, gold. Eh, let's get some gold bars. Add to cart. Star of Bethlehem 64 tweets. Follow me to hashtag worship the baby. They're all following their four square accounts. I'll show them at the stable. And now a video at YouTube of the baby's birth. And there you have it. <laughs> Leo, I think you narrating was the best part. <laughs> Times change. Feelings remain the same. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Happy digital Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Leo. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.